Yo, what's cracking? It's your boy Classic, and I'm here on WSUM 91.7 FM Madison. Before we get started, let me say the opinions on the opinions expressed on this show do not reflect the views of WSUM, the University of Wisconsin Madison, or its Board of Regents. So, without further ado, my name is Classic, and you are listening to Classic Communication. This show is created to give college students and others within the college atmosphere a platform to engage in beneficial conversation about their various passions. This show is intentionally crafted so that guests can have a space to talk about their highest points and their lowest points within their pursuit of their passions. Um, Today here in Madison, we have the temperature at 46 degrees, and we can look forward to decent temperatures approaching this week as well. So all of those that are worried about if it's going to get cold again, I think we're okay. And I am very happy to be bringing today's show to the UW campus and to all of those listening around the country as well. Today's show perfectly follows the narrative of this show as I have a member of University Health Services here with me to discuss mental health. I am very excited to get into this, to get into the content of this show, to give those listening a different perspective about mental health. Um, I have a lot planned for today, so I will not waste any more time, and I will introduce today's guest, who is Lisa Imhoff. So, you mind telling us something about yourself? Sure. So, I am a, a mental health provider at University Health Services Mental Health Services. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a clinical substance abuse counselor. Um, and I've been with UHS for about um, a little over two and a half years now. Okay, sounds good. So um, that is our guest for today. And to get things started, we're going to get started with some fairly happy music to get everybody in the mood to just feel good and get into this show. So I'm going to play this first song, which is It Gets Better With Time by the Internet. So I hope you guys like this and I will see you all in a minute. Keeping us moving forward with 
hope we seek true happiness throughout our life's length. The trials we face bring pain and sorrow, but resistance sires strength. The easy path rarely leads to what our heart truly desires. In this life, we must face many a worthy challenge for the outcome to satisfy us. To win in spite of struggle applies much greater magnification to one's honor, which I value more than instant gratification. So believe me when I say that time can heal most any wound and ease most pain, yet the scars remain to the day we lay in tune. So please know nothing in this moment is the same as a moment ago. Each one that passed the treasure lost is their Hey, WSUM retweeted my tweet. Wait, how? And my Instagram story got featured on their Instagram story. That is so cool. How can I get featured? Hey, fellow WSUM listeners. Did you know if you tag WSUM in your tweet, you might just get a retweet? Also, did you know you'll get a chance to be featured on our Instagram story if you tag us in your story? Go follow us on Twitter at WSUM and Instagram at WSUM 91.7 for updates on station events, ticket giveaways, our latest merch, and more. Tag us in your post for a chance to get a retweet or featured. Wow, I'll give that a follow. WSUM, hashtag audibly innovative. Hello, we are back here at WSUM, and I'm still here with my guest, Lisa Imhoff. And getting into this first conversation, I thought it would be beneficial for those on campus and those listening. Um, if you could just give us a kind of breakdown of what UHS and MHS is here on campus. Sure, I'd be happy to. So UHS stands for University Health Services, and University Health Services is a student a health service center, um, which has several departments, including mental health services. Um, the other services that we house are prevention work, and under that uh, is violence prevention, survivor services, and healthy campus. Um, I mentioned mental health services. We also have primary care, so those are the folks that you're going to see when you have a cold or um, maybe a broken ankle. Um, and then we have women's health, um, and I think that it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. So, um, I guess my first question here would be, how how did you get involved in UHS and mental health services in particular? Mm -hmm. And would you consider mental health to be a passion of yours since you've been here on campus? Sure. Um, so definitely, my work with mental health predates my time here at UHS. Okay. Uh, for about twelve or so years I used to work in uh, the Madison community working um, with adolescents with mental health concerns and their families. So kind of coming to, to mental health services here on campus, um, I, saw, I saw this position that was um, focused on serving underserved and underrepresented students. And um, that is a passion of mine, actually, um, is to get people that are maybe more disproportionately impacted by um, systemic issues um, get services that they need. So um, I found the position to be really appealing. Um, let's see. And is it a passion of mine? Mental health is a passion, one of my passions. Um, I, okay. I think a larger passion is actually advocacy work for um, people with marginalized identities. That's All actually right. my primary passion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, that's uh, that's good. Do you do work in that in that field too? I do. So uh, in my role at mental health services, I've also um, I chair the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee in mental health, and I co-chair um, UHS's equity and diversity committee, and I also uh, co-chair uh, the vice chancellor of student affairs committee. 
Okay, so it's a lot of chairs. It's a lot of chairs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheering a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. And another question for you would be, um, what are what are the roles as a member of UHS and what are some of your roles as a member of uh, mental health services? Sure. So as I mentioned before, we have several different departments. Right. So um, people working outside of mental health services um, have different roles and responsibilities. And because I don't know exactly, I, w- I probably won't do it justice. I won't speak so much to okay. their roles. But in mental health services, there um, are a variety of um duties and responsibilities that yeah. employees have. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to start even just with our front desk staff, um, those who greet the students coming in for mental health services, that their their role is to kind of answer the phone, um, greet students c- coming in, help them uh, feel comfortable accessing our services. Um, we have counselors, mental health counselors, we have psychiatrists, we have um, nurse prescribers. So we have a, a quite a few different um, professionals on our staff. Okay. And um, largely though, we provide counseling support for students. Um, and we have groups, so that might look like individual therapy groups. Mm-hmm. We also actually go out into the campus community and provide outreach. So kind of meeting people where they're at and what their needs are. Um, so many of us will go to the Multicultural Student Center, um, the Black uh, Cultural Center, schools, like schools of medicine, school of nursing. So whatever kind of the requests are, we'll go out there and talk about mental health. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. That sounds really good. Yeah. And are are there any guarantees in a typical day of somebody that's working in your position? Oh, let's see. I would say my only guarantee is that I'm going to eat lunch. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like every client uh, presents with different concerns. Okay. Um, So that's what makes my job um, like exciting and challenging. um, And it keeps me from being bored. Um, And um, yeah, I find, I find that part of the work exciting. I'd rather not have guarantees to my role. Okay. Yeah. And do you see a lot of students per day and do people, that you work with see a lot of students per day or is it more like just depending on what day it is how many students are coming in so definitely our work our work schedules vary based on your title and maybe other responsibilities you have but mostly we have we see typically about um, students 26 direct hours a week so that's about 26 students a week for most of our providers okay yep and is that is that like a typical number across other colleges or is that more um, I believe so. I can't actually tell you for certain. Okay. Um, I think it's fairly in line um, kind of with what the community is doing. I think it's actually a healthy balance because if you, you know, see people kind of, let's say you're scheduled to see seven or eight students a day versus yeah. like maybe six, I think there's a higher chance for provider burnout okay. and then you're not as effective in your role. Right. So I think currently how um, mental health services has the number, it seems um, like a healthy balance for both the okay. students and provider. Yeah. So that sounds really good. And that just kind of wrap, wraps up the introduction of who you are and what you're doing. And we, we found out that you do a lot of things and a lot of chair positions. Yeah. You, uh, you said you did advocacy, mm-hmm. advocacy, av- advocacy work as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, every day is just a new day, just kind of going through it and seeing how it is, uh, seeing how it is. So that's, that's really interesting. And moving on into our second point today would be my first question there would be what could be some of the hardest parts about working in mental health services? And if there's one that trumps all of them or it's the more intense Mm -hmm. Um, What would that be? Mm -hmm. Well, since half of my role is tasked seeing underserved and underrepresented students, um, and particularly students of color, I feel like um, it's hard to hear their stories of being on a predominantly white campus and experiencing multiple microaggressions in the classroom, in the greater Madison community, and how that impacts their academic su- success potentially. Yeah. Um, so it's a whole nother thing that they have to navigate on top of just being a college student. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, I think that's just hard to hear as someone who identifies as a person of color as well. So kind of hearing 
those stories and then helping them through and helping them find hope when um, you see it impacting faculty and staff of color as well. So that's a, that's a hard challenge. Okay. Um, but I think the hardest thing is seeing students who um, their mental health concerns may be so great that it, it could um, influence their need to withdraw from school. Okay. And I think that's, that's a hard decision for many. Um, but I, what I try to tell students who, who choose that is like, you know, getting your degree isn't like, doesn't have to be a linear process that right. your, your health and well being is more important than kind of plowing through and getting it done in four years or whatever the, yeah. the time frame is. So, yeah. 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 So I'm just hearing that it's, it's kind of a challenge to overcome that barrier between some of the students that come to you just because they have different experiences. I mean, of course, all the, all the students that come to you are going to have different experiences, um, but those of color in particular, just navigating their lives and their roles that they play here at UW-Madison, being a predominantly white institution, can kind of have effects on the, the help that you can give them and, like, how, how much you can relate to what they're going through. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I feel that that's a, that's a really big point because I feel like even in the community um, – that I've been noticing so far, um, s- some some minorities would rather be helped by somebody of color mm-hmm. um, in some situations just because they feel more comfortable. They feel like they um, they could relate to them more right. than somebody else. So exactly, yeah, I feel like that's really that's a really good point to hit on. And there was recently a, a article by the Daily Cardinal, and I just wanted to know how you would respond to that article that detailed the lack of funding. UW Madison is implementing for its mental health services, def- despite mental health being a, a prevalent issue on the campus here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a hard matter that I think um, this institution and other college institutions across the nation are experiencing, as well as um, just community at large. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, trying to. I, f- I guess I feel for those students that um, aren't able to access the services. Yeah. And I know there's some logistical reasons as to why it's challenging. Yeah. So I kind of am holding both. Okay, um, right. Both of them. And both are, are real and valid, um, you know, places. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's also like, um, I think it also says something that, maybe mental health is being destigmatized where people are feeling more comfortable accessing services. And that's, that's actually okay, a, a good right. thing, right? Yeah. Like it may seem like, well, we don't have enough money or enough funding, but I think, yeah, it, maybe it's not, the numbers keep on increasing for people in college students ac- accessing mental health services. So I think it's sometimes unanticipated. So that must mean right. people are feeling more comfortable. Which is right. a, a good thing, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So it, it might not be that there is necessarily a lack of funding. Mm-hmm. It's just an increased population mm-hmm. that wants to use the services and they know that they are available and they're trying to, you know, trying to do everything that they can right. to get to use these services. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's a really good point. And I know the article included information regarding the wait times that students had to go through to get appointments. Some some said that they were waiting up to 36 days and the inconvenience is that the location poses to students that aren't near their center of campus where the mental health services office is located. So how do you hope UHS could possibly um, navigate these issues in the in the future? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really important to listen to students' needs um, and ensure that our services are uh, most accessible to all. Um, I think it's really important, and I know that U- UHS leadership has in engaged in conversation with students about um, kind of their ideas and taking their feedback and um, are working on ideas to implement to make this, um, to make services more accessible, um, either via location or wait time, Okay. but then also balancing resources, like so looking at, well, who are we serving actually and um, yeah, so you, it's a, it's really kind of a a complex issue. Um, yeah. Like again, that increased demand, and how do you kind of uh, respond in a way that um, 
works for all. Yeah, and, and would you think that maybe just having more, more like sub segmentations of mental health services around the campus could be something that could possibly come? Like if we have a one office in Lakeshore on the mm-hmm. far side of campus, and maybe one, um, you know, more more in the center of campus because mm-hmm. this is kind of on the edge of campus as sure, well. Sure, sure. Like, do you think that that's something that is reasonable to ask for? Or maybe something that could be uh, a fits to this this issue. I definitely think it could be um, one of one of the things that could help the issue. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's the answer, right? <laughs> and I think very rarely there's you know always one answer, but I could see the value in having counselors be in spaces that are more accessible for folks. It, I mean, it kind of intuitively makes sense to me, so I don't think it's unreasonable. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So the students have definitely been talking. They really. They're trying to voice their opinions. They're keeping up with what's going on as far as UW's funding. They're making sure they're up, <laughs> up, you know, to to code. And they just, you know, they're they're looking to to see a, see about the resources that they have. You know, mm-hmm. they they really care. And I feel like it's a really great thing that this article was posted, just because it, like you were saying, it shows that these students do care about these resources and they really want to use them mm-hmm. as much as they can. Mm-hmm. So. No, um, yeah, I think it's wonderful. I think, you know, sometimes it may feel challenging, but also it shows a demonstration of support for mental right. health services. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest takeaway that people value this. Yeah, especially since mental health seems like some of the, one of the things that people rarely talk about mm-hmm. um, ever or when they do. It's, it's for a very short period of time and then it's just right. back to normal. Right. So, um, yeah, sounds really good. And just want to ask how how do you navigate and overcome these things that make the job more difficult um, um, and what motivates you I guess that goes hand in hand in hand like what motivates you to keep doing what you're doing and staying consistent in your positions mm-hmm. yeah well I think sometimes it can be stressful to kind of know that maybe students aren't completely satisfied and sometimes do have to wait longer to be seen by their their therapist so that's a real thing that I feel yeah um so I I try to prioritize students with greater needs to see them more frequently so I kind of play around with my schedule a little bit to not make it um feel like everyone's getting the same thing because not everyone has the same issues right so that's one thing I do um just in terms of my own self-care what I do is make sure that I leave work at work and I get engaged in plenty of exercise, um, spend time with family and friends, and process um, with my colleagues when things are challenging and, okay. and provide support yeah. to one another. Has there been an instance where um, maybe work did end up coming home or it, it kind of, you know, mess with you a little bit? Like, is that, is that something that happens pretty often in a position like this? I think it can. Um, I think I've worked in the field long enough to not let it kind of bleed into home life. Um, and I, I think I'm coming in with a different perspective. So again, working in the community, I was work. I was in pe- families' homes, working with um, adolescents who were in the juvenile justice system. Okay. So some and with some serious substance use and mental health concerns. So in some ways, kind of coming here, I can kind of. I know that the students overall are functioning pretty well because they're right. at an academic university. Right. So there, I try to have that perspective. Um, so I, th- I probably did that more in the past, if, okay. I, if I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask if you if you participate in a lot of um, activities that go on on campus, you know, outside of what you do at Mental Health Services and UHS. Um, I'm on the advisory board for um, the APETA Student Center. Okay. So that's... Uh, One thing that I, it's part of my role still, but um, I try to get involved um, with things that I'm passionate about. So that I, it's part of my role, but I don't have to do that. So things that I want to do actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this has been a really good conversation and I guess we'll take a break right here and continue talking after this song. And the next song is actually 24 seven by Kehlani and I did some research, and apparently this is a really good song for those that are having a rough time or need a little bit of inspiration. So hopefully this will have you feeling good, and we will be back after this break. (laughs) 
The National Institute of Mental Health reports that one in four adults will experience a mental health disorder in a given year. Untreated mental illness in the U.S. results in an average cost of $100 billion annually. I'm Representative Janet Bewley from Wisconsin. Women in Government urges you to talk to your health care provider. Between 70 and 90 percent of individuals see significant symptom relief. To learn more, visit womeningovernment.org. Hello, we are back on the air, and if you are just tuning in, I am here with Lisa Imhoff, and she is a member of Mental Health Services and University Health Services um, in their mental health department. Uh, sorry for that. And we have just talked about what it means to be a employee within MHS and what some of her roles are and some of her passions are outside of mental health services and how she overcomes some challenges that she may have in her line of work with some of the students that she has to work with, so, or just in the position in general. So, so far we've been having a really good conversation. It's been a really good show so far. And now I wanted to move into a, a segment of the show where we could just talk about the resources that students have on campus and how they utilize them and maybe some things that they can do to overcome uh overcome stigmas related to mental health services or UHS or getting help. So mm -hmm. one of the first questions I would just ask her, what are some of the resources that students have available to them on campus and how do they and can they access these resources? Mm -hmm. And are you meaning kind of in regard to mental health? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, of course there is mental health services at University Health Services, um, and the way you can access that is to call or access pr providers um, and do a phone consultation over the phone. Okay. Um, and that's about a 20 minute phone call. Um, otherwise, we also have an in person option for uh, people or students who don't feel comfortable having that conversation over the phone and just want to meet someone one on one. Right. 
Um, we also have um, providers that go out into, like I said, um, different schools, different cultural centers, and we offer either drop-in consultation or what's called Let's Talk. Mm -hmm. And what that is is a really kind of informal way to get connected with someone that is well-versed with mental health concerns and kind of, I would say, we say like dip your toe in the water like to okay. see like what mental health services could be like. Yeah. Um, so th those are things that um, are advertised across campus. Okay. Um, there's also the Counseling Psychology Training Clinic, CPTC. So they're, um, they have students who are graduate students and provide um, mental health counseling for students on campus. And I believe their services are unlimited. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and there is, like a, I believe, a a recording aspect to it because they um, okay. need to be kind of, you know, um, to help their development and growing as yeah. a counselor. I, I noticed you said theirs is unlimited. So is uh, MHS limited throughout yeah, the semester? Yeah. So currently um, okay. there's a session cap, um, 10 sessions for academic year and then 20 for the totality of your degree. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, students could for sure come in and get some help mm -hmm. and be able to use the resources and really, really get, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I noticed you said that they can either come, students can come in, mm -hmm. students can call on the phone. Sometimes you, um, you have people that go out to different places. Mm -hmm. So are there other instances of these sort of um, accessibilities where, where um, the mental health services can, can, you know, kind of move around for the student if there are barriers for that student? Um, as it stands, I would say the, the outreach and the let's talk are uh -huh. kind of our efforts to, okay. to kind of get out there. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that's something that maybe is on people's minds just yeah. in terms of like the student saying location. So kind of what you were alluding to about like having counselors be in certain right. locations. Right. Okay. And what are some common stereotypes about UHS and mental health in particular that you can think of and should students be concerned about these? Mm -hmm. um, I think what I hear a lot that may, and maybe just with the, the newspapers, the student newspapers, okay. I mean, I do feel there's a fair amount of critique okay. of mental health services. Um, but I think what sometimes isn't communicated is that we really do try to be responsive to students' needs. So there's a lot of um, yeah work behind the scenes that um, go into thinking about how can we serve students in the best way possible, um, looking at providers who hold certain identities, knowing that there are certain students that would prefer to be right. seen uh, by someone that looks like them or understands where they're coming from. So those are real conversations that we're having and we think about and we do have positions dedicated for certain identities. Okay. And I know um, I reached out to you for this opportunity just because mm -hmm. I felt like this would be a great show to have. Mm -hmm. um, but do do members from the mental health services or UHS usually get uh, a voice in these sorts of articles, like student articles or like student newspapers that are circulating? Because I, I know you were saying like they have a lot of criticisms of MHS or yeah. UHS in general. And they have a lot of opinions on what, you know, what, what they would like to see. But mm -hmm. do they usually go to the source to get to get an idea from from you from you all? I think it depends on the person maybe writing the piece. OK, um, I definitely have known that um, they have reached out to members of leadership or other staff um, and sometimes not. So right. I think it's always appreciative when um, kind of both sides can be heard and not yeah. that it's a us versus them but more like we we hear you and we think your concerns are valid and here are all the things that are in the works or right. that we have been addressing these concerns but you know everything's kind of like slow moving at this institution right. so, <laughs> so it's, it's it's just challenging and I think um, maybe the opportunity to just have more meetings or yeah yeah I don't know what could you think? could you see students maybe being a part of um, maybe like a student group being a part of these meetings or I guess I could also just ask are there ways for students to get involved in MHS if they were to want to? Yeah so currently um, 
I think I can say this, uh, we're having students be a part of some of our interviews. So, for instance, I'm chairing um, the student of color search okay. um, for the a provider of uh, color, and that we are looking for like six to eight students that can consistently be at all the interviews and just to get their feedback. So that's um, something I'm actively looking for now. Yeah. And, um, we're having, you know, we're reaching out to ASM and Gabe Javier at the Multicultural Student Center to see if there's students that he may like think would be, you know, important voices to, to take into consideration when looking for um, a provider to serve students of color. Yeah. And it's uh, just for, I just just came to me, just for reference, mm -hmm. um, could you say that there's a very big difference between what is going on at MHS and at the um, psychology uh, Oh, You know, I clinic? don't actually know anything okay. that's going on. I, that's uh, unfortunate, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. Okay. Yeah, sorry. No, that's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So um, another, another question I would like to ask would be, how do you think faculty and professors play a role in students' mental health and well-being on campus um, from what you can you yeah. know, say. Yeah, so I think I think it'd be better if, I think there's some faculty and staff that really have a good sense of mental health and yeah. place value on mental health well-being um, and are attuned to their students and want to get them help and try to connect them with uh, mental health services. I do sometimes wonder about the competitiveness of academics and what that actually does on a student's mental health. Ah, I see. Um, so, and I know that some schools on this campus can be more competitive than others, and maybe the culture kind of promotes that. Yeah. Um, so I do wonder if I think, I guess, if leaders within schools can think about ways in which. They still keep it academically competitive, but also balance mental health um, yeah. and well-being. Because I see many students who are in academic schools or majors, and they seem to struggle a little bit more, to be honest. Yeah. And um, I want to ask, do you know if, because I, I, I don't know at all, but um, if you know, do are there um, like procedures in place to train professors or faculty on mental health services style of um, going through something with a student or maybe addressing students or promoting students to do this or that? For sure. So um, often we have schools or departments reach out to mental health services and what we provide is what's called a red folder. Okay. So it's a red folder kind of presentation to help faculty and staff. Um, it's called the three R's. Uh, recognize, respond, and refer. So kind okay. of taking them through the process of helping a student that may be exhibiting some mental health concerns. Okay. But it's largely up to the the school or department to kind of ask for these things. Okay. But we have partnerships with um, some schools where we're doing this uh, with every, kind of every semester or every new year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you do, you do things like this for other groups outside of like schools or... Um, I'm trying to think. I know we do a lot for student groups. Um, there's sometimes when, when we're asked to go into the Madison community oh, wow. and provide things so that um, I know like our eating disorder coordinator has done something in the Madison community around eating disorders. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. So a lot of different things going on to, yeah. to really help uh, help the Madison community and UW Madison community for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, what... What is some advice that you would give to students on this campus and even faculty on this campus as well in terms of UHS or mental health? Yeah, I think I'm just thinking more largely about mental health is that yeah. to reach out if you see someone struggling, whether that mm. be a peer or your colleagues, I think it's okay to, to ask if people are doing right. okay. I also think um, the more that we can talk about our own mental health and maybe our own struggles or how we overcame that can really help normalize that many people experience mental health concerns yeah. to some degree. Um, I think that would be my main, main advice. Um, if you are struggling to reach out or if you see someone struggling, reach in, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And I know I, um, just around campus, I always kind of hear, that, you know, mental health, some people don't want to go to mental health services just because they feel that it's not necessary. Mm. They feel like that's 
literally the last resort mm -hmm. like that is when everything is falling apart everything is crumbling they're mm -hmm. like okay mm -hmm. then i'll go mm -hmm. but what, what what would you say to those who aren't are, are resisting going to mental health services or are resisting coming to services mm -hmm. um, although they might need them yeah i think i mean so often we do see people when they come in crisis or yeah, like it's like right. the last resort and sometimes it's hard i think on our end because it may be too little too late like in mm. terms of like salvaging your semester right, or right so i i think in some ways we think about prevention and how do you prevent getting to that point and if you are experiencing like sleeplessness or high anxiety or um low motivation trouble you know trouble sleeping those things it doesn't hurt to call and talk to our access provider and they can help you get connected to a service that will meet your need and not not all services we have at mental health are the same. So okay. you can do like a single session mm. or, um, you know, individual counseling may not be this long drawn out thing. Maybe you only need one or two sessions to kind of get yeah. back on track. And our providers aren't scary. Like <laughs> they're super cool. Yeah. I actually really like my colleagues. So we laugh. We're like normal human beings. We're not yeah. there to judge you. Um, we really get it and we care and we want students to be successful right of course yeah um is mhs uh, a confidential service it is a confidential service um yeah <laughs> can't, can't tell we'd lose our license if we weren't keeping your stuff <laughs> confidential yeah right yeah right okay well um those are all the questions that i have for right now so we're gonna want to go into another break we're gonna play another song and this song is by mac miller it's called self-care and it's uh kind of ironic considering what happened to uh, the artist Mac Miller with his death but um, this was always a song that I liked since his album came out and this is the next one that we're going to be playing so we will be back right after this break I'm 
complete and get up slow I just connect and upload Watch it spin around We just spin it round It's gonna travel through the unknown We play it cool, we know we f*** it all You keep on saying you want love so Tell me are you really down? No, you really down? Yeah. Let's go back to my crib and play some 45 It's safe and yeah, I know they still a back and we are about to close the show out um before we do that i have one more question that's fairly simple just think about some things to give students uh and the question is what are some coping mechanisms that you know of that students have used that make getting through rough times a little easier yeah they're gonna sound really simple but um distraction so okay. a lot of students tell me like binge watching netflix is uh -huh their go-to um not always the healthiest but hey if it right. works in the moment that's <laughs> wonderful um really not isolating and really connecting with friends and sharing uh, with their friends when they're struggling um connecting with their family if they have good family relationships is helpful for students i've heard a lot um exercise Okay. Yeah, kind of the basics. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I know for me, one of the things I do is just listen to music. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's always a, a favorite among That's a people. good one. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's what I do to feel a little better. She gave you some some other things students have said make them feel a little better. But today's show is coming to a close, and I thank you for coming on to the show. Thank uh, you for having yeah, me. It's been uh, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, and an announcement for all those listening, if you know someone with a passion that you would like to see on this show, or you can think of a passion that you would like to be featured on this show, feel free to email me at classicentertainment at gmail.com. That's C-L-A-S-X-I-C, entertainment at gmail.com. All contacts will be considered, and in addition to that, if you know somebody or a friend that's on this campus that might need mental health services, please uh, do your best to refer them to mental health services, refer them to resources that can help them get through whatever they're getting through. And if you yourself need these services as well, please do not feel feel bad for coming in. Please come in and, and get the help that you that you deserve and you earned and you need. So um, without, with that being said, uh, this is the end of today's show and I felt as though it was really good. I think we covered some great content. Um, my guest was very very good and yeah i will see you all next week on my show at the same time and until then stay classic thank you alessia cara 19 year old r&b singer songwriter is best known for her debut single here